Could I thank the Karen Corley's office for um, the, listing this on the topical issues I had he had sought last week some clarification. Um, it follows on, on foot of, as people will know, Wicklow, um, at least I'd like to think so, is is the the real headquarters of film, the film industry in Ireland. Um, for over 40 years, Ardmore Studios have been um, the lone ranger in this, in the provision of um, studios. Uh, in more recent times, larger uh, studios have been provided in Ashford uh, by Universal, uh, Ashford Universal Studios under the O'Connell family. And um, so combined with the two, uh, we have Ardmore, we have the film production headed up by um, Morgan O'Sullivan. And the Vikings in, in Ashford. So with that in mind, it's an uh, action plan for jobs um, has a number of initiatives in it to help promote the industry and one is to set up an, ex an expert review group to look at what it is that's necessary to um, to assist in the provision of a a extra studio space. So on the ground I can tell you that one of the problems is that at the, at the moment um, outdoor uh, film studios are classified under class 4 section 2 of the planning and development bill regulations 2001 as amendment which in effect means that it stipulates a fee of 360 per square meter uh, rate um, which is proving to be prohibitive to the provision of this vital infrastructure it, 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 that this infrastructure has been identified in action plan for jobs and a recent report from grant Thornton. So, in a reply to a parliamentary question, I was told that there's no plans to, um, just in final, um, we have no plans to amend the planning fees at this time, which, to clarify, isn't what I asked. What I asked for was that the film studios would not, would be giving, given a new class. So, in other words, class four, section two stays as it is. But for both the provision of the application fee for large scale studios this is proven to be you know an, a, a really um a, a inordinately high cost and the second thing is that when it comes to development contribution schemes it likewise follows that it's treated in the same way as other commercial uh, types of premises where um you know a, a, that scale of it would be on the on the range of an ikea basically which is a totally has, you know, a footfall um, all the year round. God knows how many uh, cash registers on duty all the time and very full and very active. Whereas a film studio is something that may be used for three months of the year, high intensity. It may be part and parcel of the overall package, which means location shoots. Uh, and another reason why Wicklow is uh, so popular is because it's less than an hour from the airport. You, the whole backdrop is is the is the mountain range valleys, Glendalough, Rathdrum, Barkle Square is being used in Michael Collins films in ads because you have four different aspects to it and people can set up and, and my own in-laws own a, 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 the post office there and I think it, during one spell it was painted about three times a year for different and repainted back so that just gives you a flavour of what what potential is there but the studio is a, is a part of a very vital part but it's not the only part. So I feel that what I'm asking here is that it be recognised as such. I can short circuit some of the expert reviews uh, findings and tell you that this will be one that will be absolutely has to be in it. So I welcome the minister's response. And I, I, it's, it's very uh, pertinent that uh, Minister Deanahan is here because he has visited the studios in Ashford, I know in the past. He's well aware of it and as a, a previous minister for arts, and heritage and the way to, and, and with responsibility for the film industry, I think he probably has a, a, a fair appreciation of what I'm of what I'm talking about. So thank you for your look. Mr. Steele, Jimmy yeah. Dean, you have four minutes. Yeah, thank you very much. And I'm delighted to be here actually to answer this question on behalf of Minister Kelly. And uh, it gives me an opportunity just to refer to uh, Ashford and what's happening down there and also uh, to add more as well and just to uh, recognise uh, the initiative of Joseph O'Connell and his family in providing uh, free to the state Ashford Studios where we have the very successful uh, Viking 
TV series now ongoing and I understand to be continued and that is really very successful in the USA at the moment and also around the world and it's because of his initiative really that we are in a position to host this. I've been there on site and I've seen the studios there, the studio space uh, which is built to very high spec. The same with Ardmore, delighted that Penny Dreadful has now taken over all of that studio space and very successful as well. And the Irish film industry, I was delighted to have the opportunity of extending Section 481 and also increasing the benefit to 32%, which is now one of the best in the world, let me say, and also to introduce the Tom Cruise clause, uh, which in other words, that major actors from outside the European Union would be seen as part of the overall budget. So I was delighted to do all that when I was Minister for the Arts. Um, just another point as well, that um, Steven Spielberg, when he was here, I met him with the Taoiseach at that time and said he would love to do film in Ireland, provided he had a studio space of 60,000 square feet. I understand Mr O'Connell is prepared to provide that with some assistance from government. Um, just planning authorities in Ireland receive uh, 20 to uh, 30,000 planning applications a year in recent years, down from a peak of over 90,000 in 2006, which cover everything from house extensions to large developments. The consideration of planning applications by planning authorities is resource intensive and expensive. A planning application must be extensively checked and validated to ensure compliance with the regulations with a view to ensuring in particular the right of the public to participate. Each application also requires thorough assessment in line with the county development plan and to comply with our obligations under the EU environmental directives. Planning application fees yielded in, order, in the order of 7.7 .7 million revenue uh, in 2012 to local authorities to run a system which implied 1,343 staff, of which 227 were professional and technical staff. The annual financial statement for the local government sector states that in 2012, expenditure by local authorities on forward planning was nearly 37.2 million euro, and on development management was just under 85.5 or 88.5 million euro, making total local authority expenditure and planning of uh, 125.5 uh, 0.7 million euro. can be seen, therefore, that the amount of income received in fees is only a fraction of the cost of running the planning service. Section 2 of Schedule 9 of the Planning and Development Regulation 2001, as amended, sets out the scale of fees for all planning applications. These include the provision of a house, 65 euro, maintenance improvement, or other alteration of an existing house, including any works for the provision of an extension, 34 euro. Regarding Class 4, that Deputy uh, Dye referred to provision of other buildings, uh, 80 euro for each building, or uh, 3 euro uh, point 60 for each square metre of gross floor space to be provided, whichever is greater. This is subject to a maximum of 38,000 euro for any planning application. Class 4 therefore includes the provision of buildings for commercial, retail, industry, and manufacturing purposes and includes studios. The fees. Uh, 3.6 euro for each square metre of gross floor space in respect of studios are therefore the same for any other commercial development. It should be noted also that the fee payable for applications for permission for strategic infrastructure development made directly to onboard Panala is the economic cost of dealing with these applications. In other words, the fee involved would be considerably more than for applications to the planning authority. While the planning regulations are generally kept under review in the Department of the Environment, Community and Local Government, I understand that Minister Kelly has no plans to reduce the planning fees at this time, either generally or in respect to studios. Thank you. Thanks, Minister. Deputy Dyer, you have two minutes for a supplementary. Yep. Okay. I thank the Minister and appreciate that um, he's, he's reading off a script prepared on behalf by Ministers Kelly's office. And uh, um, just unfortunately, um, the last uh, phrase says, no plans to reduce the planning fees at this time. What I'm asking here is that um, this, this particular piece of infrastructure be treated in a different way. And I don't accept that it is, it is that onerous to actually process a film, industry, a film studio application in the same way as large commercial buildings, which might have, like, there's a visual impact 
um, there's a noise, there's a sound, uh, uh, so, so, sorry, noise. Um, there's very little by way of, you know, threats to the, damage the um, environment by effluent or anything else. The film industry is very mobile. New Zealand, some parts of Eastern Europe are very active and will compete. Now, Section 4A2 is very helpful. Um, and certainly a, a very big incentive, and we have the expertise, people and, and people who who are involved in film production, be it actors or producers, like being around. They like Ireland, they like Dublin, they like being near it. So it is important that we recognise those facts and talk to the people in the industry, because if we don't address this, unfortunately, um, we run the risk of not having enough of studio space, and it is a limiting factor. Say 5,000 more jobs, 1 billion annually into this country, is it, is, can be leveraged if we can provide them with the full package, and this is part of it. So I don't accept that, it's ne that, there's, that we need to uh, reduce the planning fees in, in, in total. We need to uh, look at this particular piece of infrastructure and look at the film industry and say, is it worth going after? We're given incentives through the IDA and others. Um, we're given all sorts of incentives to bring in jobs. This is to indigenous people to actually provide the, the, the infrastructure for this industry to locate and pick Ireland. They want to, so we should help them. Thank you. Deputy Minister, you have two minutes. Yeah. <coughs> Again, I can understand where Deputy Doyle is coming from. And uh, when you look, for example, at what they have achieved in Belfast uh, with an old building that was used by Holland and Wolf, and they've turned it into a studio. For example, they got the Dracula movie because they had the necessary space. And also uh, in London, for example, the greater London area, they're taking in about uh, one billion American dollars at the moment of business from uh, Hollywood and that area generally uh, because they have the studio space. So uh, this is a critical issue, and I agree with Deputy Dye, will have to be um, in some way addressed if we have to continue the progress we're making in a very vibrant film industry in this country at this moment of time, uh, which is growing. And just to remind people again, the planning application fee in respect to the studio is three point six euro for each square meter of gross floor space to be provided subject to a maximum of 38,000 euro. This is the same application fee applicable to all types of building other than individual houses and agricultural buildings. That is the same as for the provision of buildings for commercial, retail, industrial and manufacturing purposes. It's unclear why a special case should be made, this is the script here, should be made for studios as opposed to all these other types of buildings. But uh, just could I say that if that is the maximum, 38,000, uh, I think that, apart from planning fees consideration, I think there should be other incentives given as well to people who are prepared to develop studios. In this particular case, uh, I think that these people have invested a huge amount already with no state aid. So hopefully when there's a review of uh, the, the whole, I suppose, supports for the film industry that this is something that can be considered and I certainly will deliver uh, what Deputy Dyle has said here today to the Minister. Thank you. Thanks,